Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Call of Duty Warzone, which is Modern Warfare's new free-to-play battle royale. This is the intro cutscene where you fly in and get ready to deploy onto the map. And speaking of map, this map is huge. It is absolutely enormous. It's roughly the same size as the PUBG map, and it has lots of iconic Modern Warfare-themed locations, not only from this game, but also from past games like Burger Town, Overgrown, you've got Broadcast, which they've renamed TV Station, and lots of fun places that you're definitely going to recognize. But that's not all that it's got. This battle royale has kill streaks now. Yes, that's right, kill streaks. You can call them in to crush your enemies if you've earned them, that is. And it has a lot of unique features in it that other battle royales do not so far, like the Gulag, where if you die the first time, you can go fight another man naked in the showers 1v1 and the victor gets to come back to life. Briefly, on my opinions of this mode, I think that it is a super good and super fun mode. It is a fantastic and positive direction for Call of Duty and it's going to launch in a better shape than Blackout for sure, at least in terms of game balancing. I don't know what sort of like, you know, stability is going to be until it actually comes out. But I think that this game is going to have legs. I think it's going to be super fun. And all of the other YouTubers seem to really enjoy it too. Instead of me just gushing about how much I like this mode, today I want to break down the entire game mode so that you will know everything that you need on day one to play and have a good time because there's a lot going on. Today we're going to start off with the health and armor system and this is something that was actually changed based on youtubers advice you know the sellouts that you hate or whatever we actually had some pretty useful tips to talk to the devs that managed to improve the game so let's get into it you have a base health of 100 which is exactly the same amount as multiplayer and guns in this mode deal the same damage as multiplayer so you'll kill people at the exact same speed at the exact same ranges with the exact same bullet drops so there's nothing really new to learn there your health also regenerates just like it does does an MP. You never, it's not like you have to apply a whole bunch of bandages or band-aids or there really aren't any health items in this game except for the stim. So as long as you can get out of combat for a few minutes and then come back in, you'll be fine. You can use stims and the quick fix perk does work. There are perks in this mode, albeit they're difficult to get. However, what's more interesting is the armor. Your character can carry up to three armor plates that they can protect themselves with. Each plate protects your entire body magically, I suppose. It's a very simple system, but this does include your limbs and head protection as well. And this plate is worth 50 hit points or 50 health. I do want to note that headshots deal more damage in Battle Royale than they do in multiplayer. I didn't get the exact number from the developers, but they felt that since we don't have helmet systems and stuff like that, that they wanted the headshots to deal significantly more damage to reward players that have good aim and so that the higher caliber sniper rifles can insta-kill. So headshots will shred your armor very, very quickly. You spawn into the game with two armor plates. So the moment you jump off the airplane, you've got your 100 health and you've got two armor plates, which is another 100 health. And as you loot and find more, you can equip up to one more plate for 250 total health, which is quite a lot. The inventory system allows you to f carry up to five bonus armor plates that you can use to repair or swap out busted ones with, and the more plates that you have to change and fiddle with, the longer it takes. You kind of put in one at a time. In this, it reminds me a lot of Battlefield's Firestorm mode. It has a very similar armor system. I will say the plates are common all over the map. They're not that hard to find. Most enemies will drop at least a few. So unlike Blackout, when it launched, you're not punished for aggression. You don't have to protect your armor like it's a rare resource. You'll pretty much always be able to find more, and almost everybody you kill will have more armor for you to fix. In the version we played, which is what most of the gameplay is here, the game had no difference between armored and unarmored enemies Well, when it came to shooting. They had the same hit markers, the same sound, the same feedback, the same icons, the same everything. And one of the biggest issues that the group of YouTubers asked the developers to remedy was for us to have some kind of feedback on if we're shooting an armored or unarmored enemy. So they've changed a lot, and at launch, you will have a different hit marker sound for armor hits versus body hits. You'll get a unique unique sound when an armor plate is broken and a unique sound for breaking the entire armor plate off of a person so it'll be very uh, distinct and noticeable. You get a cute little blue hit marker when you do it. You have the armor pop up next to your hit marker and you get red hit markers when you finally down a person. This means you will always have some idea of how strong your target is and their health progression downwards. Similarly, when your armor breaks, you get a blue flash on your screen so that you can see it break. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you the raw clips that Infinity Ward sent me of them testing out the armor system so that you can watch and listen and really know what it sounds and looks like. And do pay attention. I'm going to show one clip where the player actually gets shot a lot and his armor breaks and he gets the notification that he's in trouble.
I'm just gonna... I got one. I got two. Nade, I threw a nade in. There we go. Next up, let's talk about the drop system, or the parachuting system. It's honestly a lot like PUBG. You jump out of a big cargo plane and try to glide down to your destination. You can pull your chute to fly more slowly or over distance and then cut the cord and pull again as many times as you need. You can't really fly horizontally crazy far like you can in Blackout or COD Mobile. And when you pull the chute, you kind of go really slow. However, you can pull and cut your chute as many times as you want to, and this is an intentional mechanic. So you can do a pull cut, pull cut sort of zigzag method and every time you cut, it gives you a really big horizontal speed boost that you can use to cover incredible distances. So the best way to cover a horizontal distance is to jump, pull, cut, pull, cut, pull, and kind of zigzag your way, and you'll go. If you choose this method, you won't auto-deploy when you get close to the ground. You're going to have to do that manually. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Next up, let's talk about the life and respawn system. There are 150 players in the game at launch. Uh, according to Bleaks and at least the early stuff, it looked like there was supposed to be 200. I don't know if we're going to be getting that or not but 150 players is a lot and of that there are four ways to come back to life so you're going to be killing people a lot first up your teammates can res you if you're downed but not dead this is a very standard normal feature in battle royale secondly your first death will send you to the gulag where you get to fight another man in the showers for a second chance you just 1v1 it's literally the same as gunfight only the winner goes free the other guy is dead for good Interestingly though, your teammates and enemy teammates can spectate in the gulag because the gulag runs on a queue system, only one person at a time, and the rest of you have to sit there and watch, but you can use your mics or whatever to give tips on where the enemy is or where they're pushing, and you can throw rocks at them. The rocks don't deal damage, but they do have some flinch that'll shake up the screen and maybe make them miss. The gulag closes when there's only 50 to 60 people left in the match. I'm not exactly sure what time, but near the end of the match, the gulag will close. So the gulag is really a way to give people a second chance for some accidental early deaths or one of those deaths where you just land and cannot find a weapon for your life. The third way to come back to life is that your teammates can buy you back with a, a lot of money and you'll redeploy in just like from the airplane. You'll just parachute right back in on top of your teammates. You'll have a pistol and your standard health and that is it. Uh, I do want to point out that it's very expensive to buy people back, but it is almost always worth it to have more teammates. And finally, you can buy a self-res item that works just like like the gold shield from Apex minus the part where it's you know an actual shield and you can block stuff but you just uh, if you get down you can crawl out of the way and bring yourself back to life that's if they just don't keep hosing you and kill you instantly overall I like this system I think it's a fantastic system I think it gives you quite a few ways to avoid early deaths and bring yourself and your team back to life in many of the games where we won or played well we all died and managed to bring each other back through a series of uh, <laughs> absolute desperate maneuvers but one of the neat things that this also means is that the map stays fairly populated throughout all of it. It's not its not quite like, say, Apex, where there's crazy fights in the beginning and at the end, but nothing in the middle. Since the player count's going to stay pretty high, you're always going to have people to fight. And when you win a game, you've probably won with a minimum of like 8 to 10 kills, because you'll really need, because these people are going to be coming back to life. Moving along, I should probably talk about the in-game economy system. You've probably heard me mention buying various players back to life or score streaks, and you may Maybe even seen some of the money piles laying around the map. Well, that's because Modern Warfare Battle Royale or Warzone Battle Royale, whatever it's going to be called, has an economy system that reminds me a lot of Radical Heights, Cliffy B's last game before, well, that's a different story. But most loot stashes that you open up, little loot boxes and crates, have at least a small amount of money, and some of them have quite a lot of money, just a giant pile of it, and there's money just laying around on the ground. Every time you down an enemy, every time you kill a player for good, you blow up a vehicle, or do anything really noteworthy in this game, you're going to get paid at least a little bit. So the longer you participate, the more money you're going to have. Most importantly, dead enemies drop all of their cash. So it's kind of like a big bonus. If you can go loot the bodies, you can just sop up all of their cash really quickly. You don't even have to press X. You just run over it and you just pick it up like instantly. There are three different types of challenges that you can complete for big cash prizes as well. I think most of you are familiar with these from the leaks, but the first one is a scavenger challenge where you find, uh, you have to pick these up on the map. You'll see them, but you'll pick them up and then you have to find three to four certain crates in various locations. So it kind of sends you running around. And then the last crate has a guaranteed legendary item in it, which is very nice and a ton of cash. 
The second type of challenge is a, I would call it a domination challenge, where you literally have to capture a dom point just somewhere in the middle of this battle royale. And I think you have to do this with another squad nearby as well. They try to make it hot, but if you capture that dom point, everybody gets cash. And the third one, which I personally think is the most difficult and most risky, is the assassination contract, where you hunt down and kill another squad. I think it pays the best, but it's the hardest to do, and the other squad does get a notification that they're being hunted. It'll kind of show you a region. It'll show you like a probably like a one square kilometer region where they're at, a, just a giant block, and it'll give them a notification that they're being hunted and you can go try to find them. I, I had squads hunt me unsuccessfully. I never went for hunting another squad because it was just too big of an unknown to push into these buildings without really knowing where they are. And you can use the money that you earn at buy stations that are all over the map. They're clearly marked on the map. You can see them on the mini map. They glow. You walk up to these crates, open them up, and you can buy a variety of things. And I do want to note they make a noise when you open them. And once they've been opened, they stay open. So if you see one and you see that it's been opened, you know that another squad has been there. But the store is unlimited. Anybody and everybody can buy as much as they need. Some of the things you can buy are kill streaks, which we'll be talking about next. You can buy teammates back into the game, you can buy yourself self-revive kits. I think the only way to get the self-revive kits in the buy station, I don't think you can just pick them up on the map. You can buy drop kits, which we'll be talking about soon. You can buy more armor, more ammo, you can buy certain specialist abilities like dead silence or a trophy system. And this is a great system because it rewards you for participating and you just always have a way to resupply and restock and take care of your team. and. I think it's pretty nice, and in this game, more money is not more problems. Uh, you definitely want to have as much money as possible. Finally, let's talk about the kill streaks in Battle Royale. Yes, this Battle Royale has kill streaks, and they are not earned strictly for kills. You have to buy them from the buy stations like we talked about, which you'll probably get your money for by killing people, or you can find them laying around the map. However, I will say that they are super ultra rare around the map. They're a higher rarity than even the gold legendary items, so don't expect to see too many of them laying around. Sometimes you kill enemies and pick them up off of them, though. And right now, there are currently only three streaks that you can access. There is a UAV, which does not sweep the entire map, but rather about a 100 meter area around you so that you can see your immediate surroundings. A cluster strike, which works just like it does in multiplayer, and a precision airstrike, which also works just like it does in multiplayer. All three of these streaks can be extremely strong in the right situation. The UAV is probably the most underrated because it prevents people from sneaking up on you, it lets you clear buildings out of campers, and lets you push into the next zone more safely. Though people can shoot your UAV down with lock-on rocket launchers, but doing so would reveal their location. The other two are basically just big area of effect bombs that you blow people up with, and you can only carry one streak at a time. So if I'm carrying a precision airstrike, I can't carry a UAV or a cluster strike or vice versa. Each player gets one streak that they can carry. It's definitely very fun. It's definitely very satisfying. It kind of works within the mode, but my big fear for this mode, the biggest criticism, the biggest like scare that I have for balancing concern is that once players get good and they kind of learn how to play, they're going to save a bunch of streaks for the end. And when it's in a tiny circle, it's just going to be airstrike, airstrike, bomb, 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 you know, UAV. And it's going to be the, the last circle is going to be very difficult to survive in. So my advice to Infinity Ward was I thought that they should disable the streaks after a certain point, but We'll see how that pans out, and I think that my best advice for you is to save them for when you really need them and not just blow them for funsies. These are top tier, super important items, more important than anything else really, and you want to use them as tactically as possible. Speaking of items, let's talk about drop kits and a bunch of inventory stuff here as we're moving into the latter half of the video. You loot most of your gear just like a normal BR. You find it in crates or on the ground or from drops or whatever. It has rarity tiers from common, uncommon, epic, rare, legendary, and each one of these is just one more attachment on the weapon. The damage of the weapon, its range, its performance, all that stuff is unchanged. It's not like Fortnite where the gold scar deals more damage than the purple scar. Instead, you just have more attachments on your gun, which could be anything from extended mags or a thermal sight or something cool like that. The ammo that you pick up, thankfully, is generic ammo, so you're not really fiddling with like 45 versus 40 caliber and 5.56 and stuff like that. You'll pick up generic assault rifle ammo, generic SMG ammo, pistol ammo, shotgun ammo, etc. It's a very simple system. You can rarely find gas masks on this map as a legendary item. We're going to save that for a different part of the video, but the gas masks are super useful. You can carry up to only one tactical and one lethal, unless you have the perk, which gives you more. 
So there's no crazy stacking like in Blackout or Apex. You can't just have like 40 grenades to throw at people. Most players, unless they're running the perk, are going to have one of each. And if they have that perk, then they might have like two of each, you know, big whoops. You can't get spammed too hard. Well, what I really want to talk about is drop kits. Drop kits are an entirely different animal. You create your drop kits before the match starts, just like your regular multiplayer create a class system. And picking up a drop kit is the only way to get perks in this mode. You can't scavenge perks, you can't buy perks, you can only get them by earning a drop kit in some way. And perks are, some are the same as multiplayer, some are a little different than multiplayer, but they're all still very useful. There's ghost, uh, ghost keeps you off the UAVs. Hardline gives you, I think it's just cheaper to buy things. Point Man gives you more rewards for certain stashes and completing objectives. EOD gives you some explosive immunity. You can run uh, Cold Blooded so that you don't throw up, a, throw up, show up on thermal sites. And it's also one of a very few ways to get thermal sites on your weapons. There's a few legendary weapons that have thermal sites, but typically you're going to see most people getting them out of drop kits. Just as a general pro tip, since we're in Battle Royale now, smokes and thermal optics are going to be very meta and very, very useful to your team. And those are just really god tier things to have. Similarly, having hybrid sites that you can quickly swap back and forth between red dot and some kind of zoom is going to be much more useful than it is in multiplayer. And for the drop kits, most players opt for two fully kitted weapons and all of, with all their favorite perks and specialist abilities and stuff. A few people would go for like a sniper shotgun or or a shield or a rocket launcher. I did the rocket launcher thing for a little bit, but I didn't find it to be as useful to hunt down vehicles. And once per game, the Modern Warfare Battle Royale will drop 50 drop kits in between player squads. So it's gonna identify where all the squads are, and it's gonna drop a drop kit exactly between you and another squad. So you have a choice to keep looting and ignore it, or you can go try to pick up that. It's going to drop three crates, so your whole team can get their perfect, optimal, like, godly drop kit stuff, good to go with all their perks. But you know another squad is going to be going for it, so you're going to have to fight another squad and win, if not more than one. Sometimes they kind of drop together in a cluster, so they drop them once per game. You get an announcement, they're visible on the map, they're exactly between you and the other squad. It is very high risk, but very high reward. Personally, I've, I started going for them the more I played because of the value of the stuff that I get, and most people do fight over them. Got three more things for you here at the end of the video. I wanted to talk about inventory management. You can press up on your D-pad on PS4 to spot people. It'll give you a little red ping if you have them visually in range. You can also tag and spot items so that you can share and make callouts if you don't have a mic. The D-pad also allows you to drop money, drop armor plates, drop ammo, guns, just about everything from your inventory. I will admit the ping system is a little bit awkward, but you can just kind of tap it and do it pretty quick. The D-pad ammo thing, however, is more difficult to do and that's basically going to be requiring that you stand still. You're not going to be able to just run and drop ammo and plates. You'll have to stop for a moment and kind of fiddle with it, but it's still a much better inventory system than Blackout. The gas is brutal. It's green, it's very deadly, it stops health regen completely, it blurs your vision. It is a very powerful, very nasty gas that you don't want to be in, which I think is fantastic because I hate getting killed from the gas in Battle Royale. If somebody kills you from the gas, you are probably in bad shape because you'll be difficult to see and they'll be suffering. You can stem in the gas to buy a little bit of time, but not much to be honest. And the ultra rare gas mask item can be picked up and this will allow you about 15 seconds of gas time before it breaks you can you can you'll just run into the gas and you'll slide it on and it has a little meter that counts down and it's got 15 seconds of total time this one doesn't recharge or refresh once it breaks it is gone and you primarily want to use that to reposition in case you kind of get pinned down in like a weird zone and you just you know you have to run through the gas to get to safety that's really what it's for and at the end of the video, my overall thoughts on this mode is that it is a free-to-play, fully fleshed out, fun battle royale, and I'm predicting that it's going to be a banger. I think all of the YouTubers that I played with were very happy with the battle royale with its performance. I had a great time playing with it. My gameplay here, I think, is much better than usual, even though I was playing on PlayStation against a bunch of PC sweaty boys. And I'm going to be playing this and streaming this a lot. Uh, I think this. I think I'll be streaming. The, it comes out like the day after this video, so I'll be streaming on that particular day, not today. 
and I'm basically going to be swapping this channel's focus to cover Battle Royale stuff and make Battle Royale related in-depths away from multiplayer, because we've kind of beaten multiplayer until it was a dead horse, and then we beat the dead horse into a fine pulp and made hot dogs and then started punching the horse hot dogs. It's time to do something new. Battle Royale is fun, it's fresh, exciting, it's interesting, and that's what I want to play. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.